it's June here and wherever you are around the world I hope you're having a fabulous day and uh, if you're new to my channel welcome please remember to click the subscribe button and turn the notification on so you do not miss out on anything that will be coming up I'd really appreciate that now it is singlet season once more it has quietly crept up on us it's happening over two weekends it started last weekend March 6 to 8th and it will be uh, taking place over this coming weekend as well March 13 to 15 now um, with the COVID-19 situation the coronavirus and what have you uh, I have been staying home a lot and avoiding crowded places but still I think it is very important to celebrate the Singapore literature scene you know books from Singapore books about Singapore books by Singaporean authors books by non-Singaporean authors but based in Singapore well you get the picture so let's get rolling with my dear friend, independent bookseller Anthony of Booktique. Conversations with Anthony, as always, inadvertently will always turn to books. And this being singlet season and all that, I decided to ask Anthony what are his top five singlet reads. And while I was going through that list, I thought, you know, why don't I share them with you as well? So um, this is Anthony of Booktick, his top five singlet reads. They are in no particular order. They're all special to him in their own unique ways. Okay, let's look at book number one. Um, the first one is Dream Stories, and this book is written by author Clara Chow. Um, this book is published by Ethos Books. Let's see what it is about. What if you could dream up of any building you like? What would it be? How would constructing it change our lives? A shopping mall self-destructs and a single mother vanishes. A tree house for orphans and old folks is torn apart by an act of mercy. The Singapore Flyer is reinvented as a political prison. In this collection of nine tales, Clara Chow examines an alternative Singaporean landscape, one that exists only on paper, and the people we might be in it. A former newspaper correspondent, she interviews nine architects about the chimeric structures and sets short stories in them. A hybrid of journalism and fiction, Dream Stories documents the voices of urban visionaries while taking their ideas into inventive, evocative new territories. If you look at the cover, you know, and I think I've seen this book, I got the impression this was just a book um, for architects, you know, it was a book about buildings. Well, I didn't know it was actually a combination of that and, you know, fiction as well. It sounds really interesting. I think this would be something I would go for. So I will add this into my TBR. You guys feel free to add this into your TBR list as well. Mine is about, I don't know, that list is going so long. All right, uh, book number two, it's um, Let's Give It Up for a Gimme Lao. I think this cover is very cute, okay? Um, when I first saw this book, um, it was quite a few years ago. Um, I thought the expression Lao here was something, uh, you know, it's it's a bit uh, of a um, expression that we use locally when we say we say something and we add the Lao at the back, you know, so it's like Walao, you know, and that kind of means like what on earth, you know, that kind of thing. And so I thought this Lao was that Lao. Okay, but it's not, I reckon. Well, this book, okay, it is um, it is a winner. Okay, it's the finalist for the 2015 Epigram Books Fiction Prize. It was shortlisted for the Singapore Book Awards 2017 for Best Fiction Title, shortlisted for the Popular Reader's Choice Awards of 2016 in the English Adult Books category. Why does that word adult books sounds a little bit disturbing to me? 
I think adult fiction might have been better. But anyway, it's let's give it up for Kimi Lau. This book is by Sebastian Sim. And let's take a look at the synopsis. I don't aspire to be nice. I do what is necessary to get what I want. Hmm, okay, sounds like some people's um, mantra. Okay, born on the night of the nation's independence, I suppose that's uh, August 9th in Singapore's case, Gimi Lau is cheated of the honour of being Singapore's first born son by a vindictive nurse. This forms the first of three things Gimi never knows about himself. The second being the circumstances surrounding his parents' marriage and the third being the profound but often unintentional impact he has on other people's lives. Talented, determined and focused, young Gimi is confident he can sail the seven seas, but he does not anticipate his vessel would have to carry his mother's ambition, his wife's guilt and his son's secret. Tracing social, economic and political issues over the past 50 years, this humorous novel uses Gimi as a hapless centre to expose all of Singapore's ambitions, dirty linen and secret moments of tender humanity. I realise all these books that um, you know Anthony recommended, I have not read any of them yet. So um, this is something that I would read, definitely. Uh, book number three is Stranger to Myself. Um, this is published by Landmark Books um, and it is available for $18.60. Stranger to Myself is um, by M.D. Sharif Udin and edited by Theophilus Quack. It is the winner of the Singapore Book Awards of 2018 for the best non-fiction title. The sacrifices of migrant workers are written in every inch of Singapore. This is so true. Um, I think it's, it's pretty much everywhere in this region. Yeah? In the bricks of buildings, ship irons, under the floor of houses. Thousands of years later, someone may hear the story of our pain and sacrifice from the walls of this city. About, after about a decade here, I have many stories and recollections to share with you. The diary contains the collected fragments of my experiences. It is not my intention to write anything against my homeland or this country. No hurt feelings, please. I have just written down the most valuable moments of my life here. This diary records observations from my reality. Now, I think this is something that I believe um, a lot of us tend to overlook, yeah. Um, our houses, our homes, our our, our, our rail railway lines, you know, um, so many things uh, in this great city, um, you know, is built um, by foreign or migrant workers, and um, sometimes we we forget, you know, that they have their stories too. Um, and I think this book would be a great insight into what their lives uh, are like. Uh, book number four is 17A Kyung Sik Road, published by Ethos Books. 17A Kyung Sik Road recounts Shamin Leung's growing up years on Kyung Sik Road in the 1970s when it was a prominent red light precinct in Chinatown in Singapore. An an interweaving of past and present narratives, 17A Kyung Sik Road tells of her mother's journey as a young child put up for sale to becoming the madame of a brothel in Kyung Sik. Unfolding her story as the daughter of a brothel operator and witnessing these changes to her family, Shamin traces the transformation of the Kyung Sik area from the 1930s to the present and through writing finds reconciliation. A beautiful dedication to the past, to memory and to the people who have gone before us. 17A Kyung Sik Road um, tells the rich stories of the Ma Jie, the Pei Pa Jai and the Bai Gu Leong, okay, marginalized forgotten women of the past 
who despite their difficulties persevered in working towards the hope of a better future. Now, you know me, anything with a little bit of Cantonese in it makes my day. So definitely this book is going into my TBR for sure. Book number five is, this is what inequality looks like. This is a national bestseller. This has been, uh, it's something I've been wanting to read for so, so long. Um, it's, I tried to check it out from the library, but it's always on loan. So anyway, um, so about the book, okay. What is poverty? What is inequality? How are they connected? How are they reproduced? How might they be overcome? Why should we try? The way we frame our questions shapes the way we see solutions. This book does what appears to be a no-brainer task, but one that is missing and important. It asks readers to pose questions in different ways to shift the vantage point from which they view common sense and in so doing, to see themselves as part of problems and potential solutions. This is a book about how seeing poverty entails confronting inequality. It is about how acknowledging poverty and equality leads to uncomfortable revelations about our society and ourselves. And it is about how once we see, we cannot and must not unsee. People look at Singapore as a success story and it is a success story. It is an amazing city that has a lot to be proud of. Um, but then again, you know, it can't be helped that some people may fall through the cracks. And this um, is it's one way, I, I think this book explores that. I, perhaps it's not fair to say it can't be helped that people fall through the cracks. I mean, I am no um, so sociologist, okay. Um, I'm I'm no no expert in this field, but I guess if we see that there are areas where um, some people are getting left behind, um, it is important for us to understand why and um, to find more effective solutions. So those are the top five Singapore uh, Singapore uh, singlet reads um, as uh, recommended by my good friend Anthony from Book Tea. But of course, Anthony being Anthony, five is not enough. Uh, he has, of course, um, given um, two more books to the list as a bonus. Okay, so welcome back to the bonus round. Um, the two extra books that Anthony um, wanted me to include uh, in his top singlet reads. Um, the first one is Riot Recollections. Um, this is from Ethos Books. It's by Zakaria Zainal and Prabhu Silvam. Now, the riot that struck Little India on 8th December 2013 was the worst outbreak of violence in Singapore had experienced in four decades. Within minutes, updates and judgments poured in thick and fast from netizens around the island and beyond. Both mainstream and alternative media used their own explanations of the events that unfolded that night. Issues of class, the treatment of migrant workers and the efficiency of the riot force, amongst others, were brought to light for scrutiny in the conversations that followed. When rioters were often simply referred to as a mob, whether unruly or uh, inebriated or as victims of xenophobia and slight legislation, it is easy to forget that individuals were involved. Okay, so Right Recollections brings us back to the ground and to the individuals who were in the thick of events at Racecourse Road. As the noise from the disgruntled and shocked Singaporeans die down, the witnesses now speak, offering a glimpse into a place that still carries the trauma of the riot long after all the debris has been cleared. Considering how diverse the workforce everywhere around the world um, is becoming, books like these um, are important to give us an insight into what life is like for these migrant workers so that we can understand them a little bit better, you know, empathy is a good thing guys and uh, yeah, and a little bit more love as I always say. 
Book number two in the bonus round is Love and Share, Memoirs of a Centenarian. This book is by Sharana Rao and Eric Sim. Teresa Shu, born in 1898, passed away peacefully on 7th December um, 2011. Love and Share is the centenarian's own remarkable story. Teresa Shu shares many incidents and episodes in her life, some never mentioned publicly before, the people she had met and the lessons she had learned. Now I don't have much information, I couldn't find much information online about this book but um, from what I understand from Anthony is that this book is uh, a wonderful read and it basically talks about the good work of Teresa Shu and there are many uh, life lessons that you can pick up from this book. Again, I've not read it yet so I'm not sure um, what else is included in the book but if you want to check it out please do so because I believe reading books like these will make you a better person. Well, I hope you found the list useful. There are definitely quite a few titles here for you to check out. Now, I'm going to put the link uh, to these books in the description in the description box below. Um, so even if you are not going out to do your book shopping these days, you can still order them online. So a big thank you to Anthony for being such a sweetheart um, to share um, his top five sing lit reads plus two bonus titles for us to check out as well. Well, that's it for this episode guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please remember to give us a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Um, tell us if you have read any of these books, what do you think of them? Or um, if you have already started your singlet season shopping, um, tell us what you have purchased. Okay, until I see you again, remember to be kind and be brave. Bye!